Hello everyone, welcome to this video. This video has sort of, I teased it on my channel in an update video, probably about half a year ago now. But I'm finally getting round to restoring the axe, or by restoring it, what I mean is putting the axe head back on the axe handle, because whoever did this, or whatever company manufactured this axe, uh, they didn't put a wedge in it, they just filled it full of epoxy, which with an axe, as you like axing stuff, that epoxy would just crack and shatter with like every impact and then eventually the top would just fall off like it has done. Now I don't have a wedge for an axe so I'm either going to try and make my own or don't put a wedge in it in which case it will just be in two pieces for the rest of its existence. But uh, yeah you can't really see it very well but you can see here there's like a lump of epoxy and all down the side there's even more epoxy. And uh, I've noticed that there's this like bit up here, I don't know what that is, but that's actually metal. So it looks like, looks like it's sort of embedded in the wood. I don't think I'm going to restore this head because as you can see it's in a, not the best condition, but it's fairly decent because I actually restored it uh, about a year ago and I've just never used it. But I will like file at the insides to get any stuck epoxy or anything out. I mean it's quite clean as you can see. But uh, my main focus is going to be on this bit of the wood. So I'm probably going to file it down and then try and, well first off I'm going to try and remove all the epoxy. Then I'm going to try and make a wedge for it. Either way I'm going to work on this head bit of the handle uh, and just get it so that it's not all covered in rust or whatever that is. Remove all the epoxy, remove whatever that metal thing is there and then just put it back on the axe head and hammer the wedge into place or whatever I decide to use as a wedge. Well, it's still a wedge isn't it? So it doesn't matter what I decide to use, what matters is it will function as a wedge. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to do that. So I will see you downstairs in the garage with the workbench out. Okay, I know the positioning is not the best, but I'll figure that out as we go along. So I've got the axe handle up here. I'm going to work on the axe head first. This is a very old workbench. I will just point out I'm not a carpenter nor axe professional or anything like that. I'm just going to be doing this from without an educated background on what I'm doing basically. So like I already showed you, it's not that bad. I'm just going to clean out the uh, inside bit. Also this may be a wood file, I don't know. These are the only two files that are confined, so whether they're wood files, metal files, whatever, I'm using them. It's probably also a good idea you wear a respirator, but I don't have one. Oh, that sounds good enough. Like I said, it was it was okay to begin with, but I just tidy it up a little bit. So that should be fine. As you can see, it's uh, it's far from perfect, but. It's good enough, it's nice and clear, there's no obtrusions. Obtrusions, is that even the right word? I don't know, there's nothing to get in the way of the handle once I put the handle in there. So that will be fine. Now I can start work on the handle. Just clamp it like this. I mean, granted, you're probably not supposed to do this, but I am doing it. Yeah, that's in place. Right, now I'll just start filing. I do also know I need to get the uh, epoxy off as well. I'll probably get a chisel for that. I don't want to take too much off. <coughs> yeah, definitely wear a respirator for this. That is definitely epoxy or fiberglass or something, because I can smell it. Uh, I don't have a respirator, so I'm probably going to go and get a scarf and wrap it around my face or something. Okay, so now I probably look like some kind of bandit. Or whatever. Yeah, I don't have a respirator, but if you are doing this, definitely wear one because you'll probably need it. So I'm just going to get a scarf. Now I don't want to make it too loose because if I do, then the axe head could just fall off. Right now, I'm going to flip it over the other side, and then. See about finding, making, or whatever, a wedge. 
There's that bit of metal. I'll put that in the bin later so it doesn't like slide anything the car's tires or something. Is that another bit of metal there? Yes it is. Now I need to get the uh, epoxy out of it. I'll just tidy up these end bits. Right, that looks okay for me. So now I need to see about getting this epoxy out. Which one shall I choose? I think it's the small one. I'm just trying to crack it so I can like... If I'm putting a wedge in here, I need to get rid of this epoxy. But I also don't want to split the uh, wood doing this. Is that thin enough? I know it's completely the wrong tool, but I don't care. There's chunks of it falling out now. People may ask what I'm doing and I would respond with, I have no idea. When you only have limited tools, you go to extremes. That should be fine because I've sort of cracked the wood, so I don't really want to put any more stresses on it. So now it's just a long process of putting the head back on it and then somehow making a wedge. Yeah, it went on that way. Right, so now... Now I just need to get it on that a little bit further. Getting there. Well, that's where it was up to before. Maybe that's why they filled it full of epoxy. But still, there needs to be a wedge. I will be back once I've found something suitable as a wedge. What I have found is this plyboard, I think it is. I'm not sure. But basically, it consists of three levels of wood. And if I take one of those levels off, then should be good for a wedge. And I'm also going to like sort of make it a bit like to a point as an actual wedge. So I'm just going to get a pen and now I'm going to mark off where to cut. So cut that out and then get to work on making that into a wedge. Now I need to, I'm going to probably going to try and take this layer off. Where's the pen? Ideally you'd use a pencil, but I couldn't find one. There we go, that split it. I'm not that bothered if this bit snaps, because I'm, well, this bit. I want that bit to snap off anyway. Like that. I think I might pull out the sander. There we go, that should be good. Yep, I think that's fine. There's the wedge, now I've made it. Let me get the other bit of wood. So originally, as you saw, it started off as just a rectangle piece like that. And now it is like that. So yeah, there's the wedge. Now I just need to hammer it into place. Just need to hammer the wedge in as far as it would well go. I see, I kind of thought that would happen as it is soft wood, but wedge wise, it's working as a wedge. Could have turned out better, but right now I just need to put those screws in there wherever they've gone. I have no idea where they are. I found one of them. Oh, I found the other one. Oh, I'll screw one in here. I'm going to stick uh, this one there. Okay, right. I have finished putting the head back on the axe and I've also cleaned up this top bit so it's somewhat level as you can see there it's like the wedge is level so yeah that's what the axe looks like now looking back on what I did I should have made the wedge out of hardwood instead of uh, what I believe was well what looks like plywood literally just layers of probably softwood uh, but despite me uh, putting a softwood wedge in there I have screwed it in with three screws as you can see I don't know if I showed you that in the recording but I originally put two 
two slightly smaller screws in and then I uh, took those out and put in these three slightly longer screws just to try and hold the wedge in there as it is a softwood wedge. So uh, yeah, but as you can see along here, the wood is pressing against the uh, head of the axe and like it's literally solid, I can't move it at all. Uh, I'm not going to do like any test chopping or however else you test an axe because I don't have anything to chop. I just thought I may as well put the axe, uh, the axe head back on the handle. So as you saw I like sanded the inside of the wedge bit to like, get the rust off and sort of smooth it out a little bit. I am aware that the files I were using were probably like wood files or whatever and I was using them for metal and wood but uh, it is what it is. It's my files therefore like I can use them however I want technically. But yeah, there's the finished product. The axe head is back on the axe. The screws are definitely secure in there. So yeah, there's not really much more to show yet, except that is the final product. And I've already gone over that I should have used a hardwood wedge instead of a softwood wedge and uh, things like that. A little extra random thing is when I was hammering the handle, uh, to put the axe head back on, as you can see, I've sort of chewed up the bottom of the handle. But never mind, it's an axe. It's it's like it's not supposed to be on display. It's for chopping up wood. I haven't sharpened it, and that's because well, it's not sharp at all. Well, I don't really need to sharpen it. It's it gets used very rarely. When it is used, the uh, the edge that's on it, it's not like razor sharp as I've just shown you, but it's definitely sharp enough to cut wood, especially with like the, uh, would that be centripetal forces? No, that would be centrifugal forces, I think. I'm going to say centrifugal because the centrifugal forces, or what I believe are centrifugal forces, as I've just stated, I may be wrong. When, when they are at work and you just like throw the axe, it can definitely get enough like force on it for uh, this edge to get into the wood and split it. So yeah, that's all there is to say about this here has been the restoration and by restoration I mean just putting the axe head back on the handle and creating a wedge and screwing it in of my, I can't even see if you can see that, of the four pound felling axe that I have. So if you enjoyed this video, like it if you didn't, then dislike it, comment, favourite, share and subscribe. Also hit the bell icon as well because that will then notify you whenever I release a new video. But that is it for this video. Thank you for watching and I shall speak to you in the next video.